How's it going everybody? So yesterday I put together this PC that you see right behind me for a friend of mine and before going to deliver it to him this weekend, I wanted to make sure everything runs good. I installed all the drivers, Windows 11, all that kind of stuff, which was a first for me because I'm still on Windows 10 on my personal one. So I went on Windows 11 on this one just to make sure it's ready for, I guess, the future when all the updates start rolling through and it's going to be less maintenance and less upgrading for him in the future. So just wanted to make sure everything is working fine, testing a few games to see how it handles. And I thought I'd give you guys some benchmarks on four or five games that I tested. So I'll go over the games pretty quickly. I didn't go to crazy benchmarking with different resolutions. I just went with my monitor resolution and went with the preset settings. So I just wanted to keep it simple. I know that if you tweak a few settings here and there, you'll get better frame rates or optimize your game a bit better. But I figured there's so many combinations that you can make when you start tweaking one or two settings. This way it's nice and straight line. It's very easy and gives you an idea of what this PC is capable of. So Ryzen 7 5800X, we have a gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti in there. We're running off one terabyte NVMe SSD for the entire build. So operating system games, everything is on the same drive. Windows 11 Home Edition, 16 gigs of RAM, and we have a 750 watt power supply from Corsair in there and it's all running in the Corsair 5000X and the processor is being cooled by the Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 non-pro version. So starting with an easy game to run, F1 2020, I ran the benchmark, I put it in, in the Canadian track in wet weather just to push it as much as I can and no issues with on ultra settings, everything maxed out, we were hitting 140 frames per second average so if F1 is one of the games that you are going to be playing at that resolution, I have no issue, so at 1080p it's going to be even better. Easily hit the high refresh rate monitor and have success with this card and CPU combination guaranteed. Not a hard game to run, so very smooth gameplay there. So on Call of Duty Warzone, which is the game he's going to play the most, I went same thing, so 1440p resolution, highest settings I can, no ray tracing and no DLSS to make sure that we're really seeing what the real frame rate of this card and processor combo in this PC could do. Um, so no issues whatsoever, we were getting around 100 frames, 110, sometimes going to 120 depending on the situation we were in. So I would say the range was anywhere between high 80, low 90s to, to about 120. So for a game like Warzone, at 1440p this card is not going to have any issues, especially if you have a higher refresh rate monitor. Even at 1440p higher refresh rate, lower the settings a little bit, maybe hit it on some high, some medium, a nice combination of the two, maybe throw on some DLSS and you'll easily be able to hit a nice, high, smooth, consistent gameplay uh, in Warzone, which is really good since he'll be playing, like I mentioned, at 1080p, 144 hertz. So he's not gonna have any issues with his PC and it wasn't even being pushed to the limit. I mean, none of the games really pushed um, everything to the max. Obviously the GPU is working um, sometimes at 100%, but in terms of the bottom, the difference between processor being pushed and graphics card everything ran um, really smooth and then on doom eternal i mean this is also a very easy game to run and on ultra nightmare settings everything maxed out we were getting about 130 frames per second so absolutely no issues whatsoever doom is a really fun game if you guys haven't tried it i recommend it it is phenomenal both of them the one in 2016 and doom eternal fantastic game and no problem ran really smooth super high frame rate super smooth even at the ultra nightmare settings so everything is good put it max it out as much as you want plus it's a single player game so max it out max it out as much as you want get the highest graphical fidelity you can and you'll still get really high frames per seconds for sure um, i wanted to throw a game in there that obviously was going to tax the gpu a bit more so i went with cyberpunk 2077 this is a game that obviously takes a lot of firepower to have a good frames per second with high graphical fidelity. And that's where this card really started to, to take a little bit of a hit. So on high settings, we were looking at about 50 frames per second. And guys, a 3060 Ti on high pushing Cyberpunk to 50 frames per second, I'm impressed, like it's, that's really good. Lowering it to, sorry, that was on ultra high settings, whatever the highest one is, I think it's ultra. It was 50 frames per second. Then I went down too high. We were getting about the high 50s, low 60s. So if you want that 60 FPS, you could go high settings, maybe tweak a few things, put on some DLSS, no problem. But if you don't want DLSS turned on, medium settings, uh, consistently over 60, even 70 FPS. So for, for a game like Cyberpunk to be able to run this smoothly on a 3060 Ti on 1440p, I'm, I'm very impressed. Now, I didn't test other more popular games because honestly, I know that a lot of people like to throw in like Counter-Strike and Valorant and just and Rainbow Six just to really see what their card could do. 
you have a 5800X and you have a 3060 Ti, if you're looking for performance on CSGO, Valorant, um, Rainbow Six, Siege, you're gonna hit high frames. Don't worry, you're not gonna have any issues whatsoever. The only way you're gonna have really bad frame rate is for some reason you plugged in to, no, not even, there's no onboard graphics. So even if you plug your, your, your cable to the motherboard, you're not gonna have any graphics. So there is no way you can mess this up and screw it up. So if you have a 3060 Ti and a 5800X and you're plugged into your DisplayPort or HDMI to your graphics card like you should, you're gonna have no issues running those four games at all. So CSGO, Valorant, Rainbow Six, Rocket League, any esports games, if you're spending them this much on a PC, you're fine. I find that with the, the leaps in technology with the, from the generation, like if we go back to, the, let's say, Skylake, and one of my my earlier builds that I had, not like a really long time ago, but earlier that's still relevant, was a 6600K with an RX 480, let's say. And the difference between a 6600K and an RX 480, and then pairing that with, let's say, a 7700K and a 1080 Ti, the, the, the difference was huge, right? And then now all of a sudden I find that if you wanna get high refresh rate, but if you wanna have high resolution, you have a 3060 Ti. A 3060 would probably be able to handle at 60 FPS, no problem if you play with the graphical settings. But I'm saying for the new generation of cards, compared to what the gap used to be between a 1060 to 1080 Ti to a 3060 to 3060 Ti to 30, you're still gonna get fantastic performance. It used to be like, oh, the 1060 is really your 1080p 60 card and if you want to dabble with 1440p get a 1070 and if you want a higher fresh rate high resolution 1080 plus so that'll do it for this one guys hope you guys enjoyed quick little benchmark video to show what this pc is capable of like comment subscribe do all that stuff get involved with the community maybe we could create a nice community together and i will catch you guys next time later